On this edition of Around BCC, we look at the 2011-2012 BCC Student Senate. The BCC eHealth program celebrates a successful first year, and it's into the newsroom for our Alumni of the Month. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Thibault. Bristol Community College has always been aware of student involvement, and that includes the governance of what happens here on the Bristol Community College campuses. And for Bristol Community College students, that means the Student Senate. We're going to introduce you to the students, some of the student senators that are organized in the 2011-2012 academic year. Actually, two of them we spoke to last year. So to my immediate left is Nicole Collins. She is the president of the Student Senate. To her left is DeAndre Moreland. He's a newbie this year to the Student Senate. <laughs> and to DeAndre's left is Jillian Bazula, who uh, is also a returning member of the Student Senate. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Nicole and Jillian, let me ask you first, Nicole. You're, you're back as second year as not only a senator, but also as president of the Senate. What have you learned over the past year, and how do you think it will make you better this year? Um, I think I definitely learned how to, I've grown as a leader this past year. Um, when I first came onto the Senate, I was elected onto the Senate and then was elected as president probably within a span of two weeks. So it's kind of a learn as you go um, experience. So this semester I've definitely done some reflecting about, you know, how to kind of motivate the senators, how to kind of get to grow our Senate um, and become an active working Senate. So that's probably the biggest change from last year and I'm really trying to make sure that all the senators that are working with us you know feel involved in the Senate have their role in the Senate and um, are contributing something. Now Jillian this is also your returning member as well what, what have you learned as a senator to take into this year? I learned that it is definitely important to get more involved and try to get your name out there. Um, being a Senate on the Senate is not always easy um, because you know, last year it was a bunch of new the newbies, and working together, we had to get to know each other. But I feel as though this year we we're starting to work good as a team, and I've definitely learned a lot of getting involved. Now, does that help, Nicole? Um, and how many are returning senators this year? Um, let's see. So I think all together, one, two. I think we have about five. Six new people. And then the Senate, how many are in the Twelve. Senate? Uh, Twelve. Twelve, so almost half. Yeah. Returning. Does that help in terms of going from year to year, trying to, you know, complete tasks maybe from last year to take into this year? Um, I think it helps to have some of the people come back. I think it's definitely new to get some new people in because, you know, it's new ideas, um, new places to take it. It's, it's good to have those people back because they may have experiences that they can share and then and help the whole group go forward, right? I mean, well, I think one of the problems that we had last year was we didn't know each other, so right. you don't know how to work with people. And just for me personally, you have to work with people differently, especially when you're leading them. Right. So it was kind of easier to be able to get to know these, to get to know everyone because I know what kind of style they respond to um, mm -hmm. and, you know, what's going to motivate them the best. So it's great because we have the veterans come back and, you know, we're all on the same page and we really have a, a goal that we're trying to get to, but it's great to have some new people in so they can give us some fresh ideas. You know, you always have a, a turnover every year, and, and in a college like Bristol Community College, you know, that's not a four-year school, even though students are here more than, say, the traditional two-year student, how difficult is it because you hold uh, elections well, late September, early October, and then the board is seated, and then you have to pick officers, how difficult is it to get off and running when you really don't start, say, till early November when you get, you know, really formed? It's actually really difficult, and that's something that I'm probably going to be working on this year um, is some sort of succession plan to kind of lead us over into the summer. Um, usually it's kind of like, you know, we all convene together in October and we kind of see where we're at and we're picking up the pieces, especially when we get into these um, the holidays that we have the events that we participate in. Right. So something that we'll try to work on is maybe start having, you know, um, interim presidents or um, interim Senate members that will be able to help us lead us on and maybe work throughout the summer a little bit mm -hmm. more. So like a, a, a incoming president. Yeah. So for the next year, that person's somewhat taking some of the leadership role before the end of spring. 
it's definitely because I think it's hard um, just for our advisors to try to get in contact with us and try to get all the elections going. So my goal is if we have our returning senators working with um, the advisors during the summer, they can kind of lend that hand to get the elections going. You know, then maybe we can get the elections going earlier and we have more time to plan the events. Mm -hmm. Deandra, you're, you're a newbie this year. Yes. Uh, what interested you about running for the Senate? Um, well, it was the uh, only thing I heard that students were on um, in BCC. I haven't seen any other thing I wanted to be involved with, some type of club, some type of organization to get in touch with more of the student body um, and just do something more other than just come to school and learn. So um, this is my first club organization type of thing. Um, on college, so I, I felt kind of eager to join. What have you learned thus far about the workings of BCC and the workings of the Senate? Um, very structural. Um, I, it's not just a open, open floor for anybody to come in. Like there's, I didn't know like you had to be voted on, and a lot of things that you know take place. You know, a lot of requirements. So, um, which kind of makes you kind of feel more than the average student. So that's why I take that extra, extra step to be on. What What do you think um, you bring as as a new voice? I mean, are, are there some ideas that you'd like to bring that that you know the the other two panelists here? You know, they've been here for a year. They're they're veterans. Uh, how, how do you how do you think your fresh voice can help? You know, in what the Senate does. Um, well, I I plan to bring as a chair of activities. The, the new age of you know the student body. I want to bring more activities that would drive students that come to BCC together and to basically join into activities, not just come here and see activity and walk away, but something that would engage students to you know come, become more involved with us with the school other than educational. Mm -hmm. Jillian, let me ask you. Well, one of the roles of, of of the Senate is to be involved in. Um, extracurricular activities clubs and, and creating activities um, but how difficult is it um, for students to get involved in clubs here at community college I mean it's not a lot of students are here they take their classes they leave so how how difficult is it for the Senate to try to promote clubs and promote this extracurricular activity it's very hard I'm um, coordinating with everybody's schedule I mean cause people have jobs families um, so we try to work around their schedules, but coming together, it's sometimes in, it's hard. And so we try to do on Wednesdays during the activity period right. um, so that we can get more people to come in. But even then it's hard because some classes are still taking place. Yeah. Nicole, let me get back to you in terms of the club. The, the Senate oversees clubs. It provides some, some funding for the clubs. Um, but how, how involved is the Senate in terms, of, in terms of the clubs? Are they just basically just an overseer um, and providing a little bit of funds? Does it get involved into day-to-day -day activities of clubs? Well, it's actually something that we're exploring this year. Um, when I started this year, there's something that I wanted to start, and we actually just appointed um, some club liaisons. Mm -hmm. So these are going to be Senate members that are going to go actually go to a different club meeting every single week. That way, actually, this, they're not, we're not just giving them money. They're actually seeing the Senate um, right. and getting our face, so we know what they're working on, too. Something else that we're working on is trying to get all of the clubs together, um, kind of as a group, sort of... Um, just to kind of converse so presidents and presidents can kind of talk to each other and see what kind of difficulties everyone's having um, and to kind of explore some things that we can to improve upon. Um, another thing that we're looking into is maybe providing some sort of leadership training for the clubs and their presidents. You know, when I first came in, you know, thank God for my advisor because she was very good at teaching me how to facilitate a meeting right. and how to work with students. But for a lot of clubs, for a lot of members of these presidents of these clubs, they kind of get fallen into the position and they don't know really where to take it. So if the Senate can kind of provide them and help them learn some of these skills that maybe would help them uh, run a more efficient club, you know, it's something that we're looking into. Now, in terms of um, the Senate itself, um, what role does it play in terms of does it set policy for students? Does it work in conjunction with administration to devise policy maybe on the administrative level? I guess, what's your interaction with, with the administration? Usually, you know, that's something, you know, I guess one of the biggest problems that we had this year is learning where our role really is. Right. And that's something that we're exploring and we're exploring it with the clubs. Um, usually administration 
most of the time will come and talk to us about something prior to, um, you know, they'd come to us and say, well, how do students feel about that? Um, I know that just recently the Board of Trustees voted to put uh, a, unisex, a unisex bathroom here on campus. Um, so it didn't, you know, it was for everybody. Um, that was something that they brought to us that they just wanted our opinion on it. So mm -hmm. a lot of time administration uses our opinions to kind of gauge the rest of the student population um, and how they might feel about certain things. Mm -hmm. But the, and, and if the Senate has some issues it needs to bring to administration, does it bring it directly? Does it go through the, tr the student trustee? How does that work? You know, we have a couple things that we're working on. Um, though basically, my goal this year is to kind of work with our student trustee, and okay. um, that's something that I am actually working with him on. So, you know, we're kind of coming together. The Senate's sharing our opinions with the student trustee, and um, at that point, it would be um, up to give it to him to kind of take take for it that extra step to like the board of trustees. Now, in terms of getting the word out to students that you, as a Senate, you're available to to answer their questions or or their concerns. How do you do that? How are you getting the word out? Other than this fine <laughs> television show, of course. Um, like I said, this year is it's kind of a shakeup for us. We're trying a lot of different things. Before, you, we actually have a student leadership office right above the fitness center. And we would sit up there. Every senator sits up there for two hours a week waiting for students to come talk to us, which isn't very often. Um, so one thing that we're doing is we're not sitting up in the office. Um, where Each senator should be walking around campus two hours a week talking to students, getting our faces out there. Um, I think the worst thing is to talk to students they don't know what the Student Senate is. And right. so that's kind of one of our goals this year is to kind of promote ourselves and get students to know that, hey, listen, we do have a Student Senate. We can help you with things. Um, something else that we're looking into is potentially um, writing an article for the, having a senator write an article for the Observer once a month just mm -hmm. to kind of get that about what's going on with the Senate and to get people to get to know, you know, who we are. Now, are you using social media? Does the Senate have a Facebook page? Or? We do have a Facebook page, and um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we just appointed our public relations uh, person today, and so they'll be taking care of that and updating it. Hopefully, we'll get some updated bio pictures, um, and we're also working on trying to get it integrated into like the BCC network right. of Facebook. Do you have, what's the URL? Facebook.com, do you know what it is? is um, it? It's Bristol Community College Student Senate. Okay, so Facebook.com slash Bristol Community College, the full name? Name. Student Senate. So if you want to find out more information about what the Senate's doing, uh, please like that page. Definitely. Right? Uh, the Senate is also involved in, an, in, in helping organize a number of student activities throughout, throughout the campus. Um, December is a big holiday month. Um, any activities you can announce now? And what are some of the things that maybe you may be planning for, say, spring semester? Um, well, I think we just actually hosted an Oxfam Hunger Banquet to promote hunger right. awareness uh, last week, which is a great success. We had a lot of students come to it and we raised some money for the cause. Um, and this month we're actually taking on the Giving Tree, which is an, pretty much an annual event here um, at the college. So basically the Giving Tree is for students who may need help buying presents for their children. Uh, they can fill out an application. We put an anonymous ornament up on a tree, and administrations or anyone can go purchase, um, take the ornament, and actually purchase a gift right. for them. So that's something that's going to be probably dedicating a lot of our time um, this next month for it. Um, but I think, I don't know, as far as activities. Any other activities, DeAndre? Um, well, I had a couple activities planned. Um, you know, basically, um, it's my activities direct more towards getting the clubs involved right. as a group instead of just as one club single and out. So um, maybe, um, you know, a group club dance, you know, that they will want to plan. So, you know, we have, you know, Gay Straight Alliance, you know, joining in and mm -hmm. the nursing um, club joining in. So we're giving up, I want to be able to have people join in instead of having to single one by one. So we're kind of like, you know, giving more power to, you know, exploit like getting the word out there so it's not just that single group with how many um, officers or how many group um, people that they have inside it's, it's times more because you have you know three different clubs it's more people it's more of the word getting out mm -hmm. I was going to say, traditionally, sure. you know, we kind of focus on the end of the year bash, but I think we're definitely looking to do some bigger events during, throughout the semester, um, something more uh, mid-semester, because I know the end of the year is kind of a tough for a lot of students when all the finals come up. They're, yeah, they're kind of busy in the <laughs> yeah. last uh, few weeks. And they don't like the music out in the, uh, in the green area. <laughs> no, because they're, they're <laughs> taking the their finals, finals at that time, right? Um, Nicole, finally, when, how often does the Senate meet? And I'm... Um, um, Sure, it's open to any student, anyone who can come to the meetings? Uh, we welcome all students to come and actually encourage them just to kind of come and check us out. We meet Mondays at 2 o'clock. 
Uh, right now we're in E107, but that's currently switching around until we have a final meeting place. Um, but that's something that we will be posting on our Facebook page um, and on the BCC Facebook page about where our meetings will be. Nicole, DeAndre, and Jillian, I appreciate your time. Best of luck with the Senate. And if you have any questions, again, probably the best place is to go to the Facebook page yes. to find out what's happening with the Senate. And uh, best of luck this year. Thank we you appreciate so much. It. We'll be back with more of Around BCC right after this. Welcome back to Around BCC. BCC's innovative e-health program in New Bedford celebrated its first anniversary last month. The technology-based health field educational program, funded through a public-private partnership, has enrolled nearly 300 students. Among them is Viviana Abreu, who takes advantage of the flexibility of the online courses as a way to break into the healthcare field. My family is first. I have two kids, a three-year-old and a seven-year-old, and for them, like, I have to be with them, but work, you have to work in order to make a living. So when this program was approached to me, I was nervous at first, but then I liked the flexibility because I could do the homework at home, and actually I could be one-on-one -on -one with the teacher at home, um, but I like the opportunity. I like uh, the way they, you could sit with them, the advisor, you could sit with them and they explain, you know, talk to me in English, tell me exactly what I need to do. You have a goal and they'll help you get there. At a recent open house, the college announced that the eHealth program will expand to offer nursing. Associate Dean of eHealth Marie Marshall says the program will open up 24 more nursing slots for students effective in the fall of 2012. This program is, is exactly like the program that has been running at BCC for uh, how many years? Um, since 60, 68, I believe, um, a long time. It's the exact same program taught in a different modality so that it's not all face-to-face -face lectures, um, that kind of thing. You can do most of it online. Your testing is at the school and there's some face-to-face -face teaching that has to be done when you're there. So there might be, I'd say for this first course, at least the first two days are all face to face. And then pretty much after that, it's taught in sections. You can stay home and do it, answer the questions, get your quizzes in. There is no difference as far as time frames. You'll have a time frame to get your homework in and your work done and um, the requirements done. Each year, nearly 1,000 students apply to BCC's nursing program, with only 72 new students accepted. So this expansion is definitely welcome news. To find out more about the college's e-health program, visit the BCC website. Time now to meet our alumni in your community for this month. It's a man who got bit by the journalism bug at an early age and has honed his skills in the fourth estate locally ever since. Hello, I'm Bill Hall, BCC class of 1972. Well, I grew up here in Fall River. Uh, started out first 10 years here and uh, had a variety of different interests as little kids have and I got into sports particularly and when we moved to Somerset in 1962 that's when uh, really took off with sports because of my uh, the neighbors that we had were all into sports as well mm -hmm. so I was 10 years old and uh, we were watching the Packer games and the Dodgers and the, you know the Giants uh, as a matter of fact what happened was um, I'm a San Francisco Giants fan and uh, we got our first color television set in 1972, uh, 62, and hardly anything was in color. So we went looking around for something that found the World Series. The Yankees were playing the Giants. And so my brother turned into a Yankees fan, I turned into a Giants fan. In junior high school, I started covering Little League games, just writing this. They had me as the official scorer. So this was over at Somerset at the Pierce uh, Little League. And uh, what would happen is I'd write the stories and send them to the spectators. You get paid by the inch, 10 cents an inch. And uh, so that's kind of how I got started. I went to Somerset High School, and at the time that I was there, I was covering the high school games for the uh, Spectator, uh, covering Somerset High School. And uh, that's basically where I was gearing up to be, like in the journalism. 
And uh, it was interesting when I came here to BCC, uh, Ed Zuzanski was our uh, teacher. He was uh, leading the journalism classes. And he was from the Providence Journal, and he was more into news. So I got into news a bit with him and uh, found that to be quite different than covering the sports. So that started a news career, so to speak. Well, I was interested in BCC because uh, now at, the, at that particular time, my mother was working here. She was a secretary for, uh, at the time, I'm not so sure if Miss Thomas was here, but she was in the nursing program for quite a number of years, 11 years she worked here. And uh, our neighbor up the street, uh, Mary Karen, was the secretary for uh, uh, Jack Hudnall, who was the president of the college. So uh, I got to uh, be with them a few times, you know, and, uh, and that was what got me interested in BCC. Plus, BCC had all the required courses. That was a key thing. Uh, it was not expensive at all to come here. And uh, you took a look at the four-year schools, and they, uh, you'd be paying, what, well, $400 or more per course, as opposed to BCC was like $50, $60. So, you know, it was a no-brainer, especially where you needed, at those times, I don't know if it's still the case today, but you needed to take required courses no matter what your major was. Mm -hmm. So two years of all of the required courses done, uh, I was able then to go on to Emerson College. They accepted all of my courses. So I started as a junior in Emerson and uh, went two years there in, in mass communications. And I worked with the school newspaper at the time, which was called The Bullsheet. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, I was the sports editor there, and we had uh, was Lillian LaFrance was the editor. We had uh, uh, Michelle Isidore was one of the ed associates editors, and uh, uh, Dennis O'Donnell was there, and a number of other folks. It was a fun time, you know, and uh, we did, the, there had been a newspaper previous to that, I forget what the name of it was, but, and then we started doing that newspaper. I did not come up with a name for it, but. <laughs> also at that particular time, and I think it's very, very noteworthy, uh, there was a draft. The Vietnam War was going pretty good. Uh, I remember being in junior high school when it started, pretty going pretty good, and just figuring by the time I'm a senior, this thing will be over. You know, but no, the thing was still going, and uh, you know, and I and a lot of our classmates were Vietnam veterans. It was, it was, and they were usually the best students. I think maybe because they were more mature, but they also knew what the other side was like. Uh, you know, uh, they they saw some hard things. I still hadn't been accepted at Emerson, and uh, one week to go, I had received a letter from the draft board and which said, you know, to meet up there in Boston, uh, have my physical, and don't bring it except, you know, your, your very few belongings, because I was going to be shipped to Fort Dix. And uh, so, but that week is when the call came in from Emerson that they accepted me. So I was within, like, one week from heading out. And uh, so they, uh, accept, as I said, they accepted my courses, worked up there, uh, studied up there for a couple of years and uh, that was when mass communications, we had some journalism but most of the, the things were in communications itself. While I was at Emerson we had an intern, internship during my senior year and uh, it, it was over at the Spectator, over there in Somerset. So, And when I graduated they hired me right away. They asked if I'd be interested in a job there. So. Uh, that's where I started, and that's where I was ever since. You know, it was a good place to work. A lot of good people to work with, and most importantly, the uh, the news angle, along with the sports. Uh, you learn something new all the time. I've never met anyone who I couldn't learn something from. You know, uh, everybody has been able to teach me something. And when you, it's like lifelong learning that they talk about. You get into journalism, it's lifelong learning. You never know everything. BCC was an excellent school. I mean, I would have recommended that to anybody, and I still do today. Uh, and of course, it's changed quite a bit today. Uh, you've got so much more offerings, and this building is so much bigger. Uh, but one of the things, I mean, to get those required courses, by the way, and you get an associate's degree, so you have a degree. And, uh, you know, the nursing program, there was second to none. I, I can remember back then. And In fact, uh, my mom, uh, she passed away this past year. And uh, several of the nurses 
who uh, were there with her were also remembered her from BCC, mm. and including a, one in intensive care who uh, remembered her, you know, without even seeing her name. And uh, so, uh, you know, it was an excellent school. I would have recommended it to anyone. Get those required courses out of the way to go to the four-year school. You get the, the two years and, uh, you know, I mean, technically I'm a graduate of Emerson College when they look and I'm also a graduate of BCC. I've got two uh, diplomas and two degrees. Here are some other items making news around BCC. The chairman of the legislature's Joint Committee on Higher Education stopped by BCC last month as part of his statewide tour of the Commonwealth's public higher educational institutions. State Representative Thomas Sanacondro of Ashland says he's learned much about the state's higher educational system, specifically that, for students, one size does not fit all. Part of what I've learned about the community colleges in particular is how diverse and different their student body can be. Um, and I, we know that's true of the community colleges, but we also know, given from when I went to school, that the whole higher education system is different, that, it, that, it's, that the student isn't exactly what students were 30 or 40 years ago. So the people are coming in, they're getting second careers. Um, they just, they can be more what we used to call non-traditional students is our whole system can be made up of non-traditional students. And so there's challenges with that and those are issues that we're trying to address as well. Representative Sanacondro says he was impressed by BCC's Fall River campus and was surprised to learn how well the college provides workforce development opportunities for local residents. Some of the things I learned here is that the work that uh, Bristol Community College has been doing with displaced workers. How do you take a worker who's been working in a particular area, maybe in a particular factory for their whole career, and then that factory closes? What do you do with that person? How do you prepare that person to be able to make enough money to support their family and really have a good quality of life? So a lot of what they're doing here at Bristol, they showed me on how they're doing that transition. Those are really critical um, things that are important for all of us here in Massachusetts. We need everybody to be getting the most out of their education and being able to actually make the most money that they can to really push our economy. Representative Sanacondro says his goal as co-chair of the Joint Committee on Higher Education is to promote ways for more state residents to get through the public higher education system. Fifty-four regional colleges and universities descended upon BCC's Fall River campus last month as part of the annual College Transfer Fair. Director of Transfer Affairs Eileen Shea says fall is the perfect time of year for students to lay the groundwork toward the next steps to their educational career. They really should be doing this a year ahead of time. I mean, really, we tell students to do it even earlier than that. But certainly students who are trying to get in in January, I mean, obviously, they want to get their information and applications in by the end of this semester. But for students who are graduating in June, this is a perfect time because really what we tell students is between the two semesters during the break time when they have more time to spend filling out their applications that that's the time to do it. So we usually tell students that by the end of this semester you really need to know the colleges that you're going to apply to. BCC will continue to have representatives of local transfer colleges and universities visit the Fall River campus right through the end of the academic year. That's all for Around BCC for this month. We leave you with a look at the artwork of Bradley Feshmeyer, Yuri Kobayashi, and David Richardson, currently on display at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery in Fall River, right through December 15th. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you in 2012.